without further ado, I give my friend Gary T. from Coldwater, Ohio. I'm Gary, I'm an alcoholic. Hi, I'm sober and knife through the grace of God through the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. And most of all, because I want to be sober, I want to, want to be drunk. My sobriety date is January 11th, 1973. I haven't found it necessary to drink, drug, smoke pot, or abuse any prescription drugs because I've been in Alcoholics Anonymous. Well, as I look back, it was a long journey from here, from here to back there. And I was thinking today, when I was still drinking, I had a friend, uh, his daughter died a week ago today. And she has her funeral in St. Henry. I was his best man for his wedding. And we was, before this, is, this happened in 68, and we was driving around about maybe 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, drinking. We ran across a guy that was at his car sitting up in the, off the, off the road. And it seemed like he hit a gully. And, his, and we, we stopped there and we asked him if he needed any help. And he says, no, he says, uh, my buddy, uh, Took off. And he's going to find us, find somebody to help us. Later on, that the following next day, we found out that his buddy that he, that, that he had thought had taken off to get help wound it up underneath the car, and the drive shaft wrapped him around the underneath there. And that guy was keeping it, trying to get off. You know, so uh, I'm an I'm an alcoholic. And I can relate to that, a lot of a lot of accidents. But I think all the people don't make the rooms of AA. And that's one of them. You know, uh, I'm here today because somebody took time out of their life for me to be sober. You know, Ron's my sponsor. He's from Angola or Auburn, Indiana. He'll get his 54-year token next Friday in, in, in Auburn. And I got another sponsor, Jerry, who just celebrated 40 years of sobriety last June. And, uh, and we learned how to do that one day at a time. There's no magic wand that you can touch a person and give them 10 years or 20 years or 40 years or 54 years. We get it one day at a time. And this is the only place I've ever learned to live life one day at a time. You know, and an inch this way, an inch that that way, I wouldn't be here today. I had a lot of car wrecks. Uh, I figured that time I got out of the Marine Corps in, in 67, I had 14 car wrecks. You know, luckily I wasn't a fast driver, because I, if I was a fast driver, I wouldn't, I'd be dead. You know, so God works out, works out, looks out for all of us, you know. And, uh, you know, I, this is my parish here in Coldwater. You know, I'm proud of this parish, even though I fell away from it for quite a few 24 hours. Now that I didn't stop going, I just didn't go every Sunday, and I didn't, but I met, I met uh, funerals and baptisms and weddings and all those days like at Christmas and Easter, but I fell away from this church. I'm finally back today. You know, I feel like I belong to this church, just like I feel like I belong to Alcoholics Anonymous. Nobody can chase me away from the rooms of AA. And I put the principles of the program of Alcoholics Anonymous in my life. You know, it's just, uh, I see a lot of people here like Bob and Deb and Ron and Joe and Andrew and Tom and Kevin and Dwayne and Charlie and my buddy Mitch back there. You know, uh, you know I remember when I first, I don't even, I remember getting tokens back when I first got so They don't. They might have, but I just don't, I don't remember that. You know, not, not like we get them today. 
you know, but they know they told me to keep coming back. Don't give up 15 minutes before the miracle. That God will do for me what I could not do for myself. And as I stayed so, I found out we worked in my life long before I got to Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, and to be here tonight with 51 years of sobriety is just a miracle in itself. When I sobered up, I was 26 years of age. I was considered a town drunk in this town. You know, because I, I thought I drank like everybody else. And I just, I just did not drink like everybody else. You know, that's the insanity of my disease when abnormal became normal. You know, and I seeked help through psychiatry. I went through to a few priests. A doctor, Dr. Atkins, my family doctor here in town. And they sent me to the, to the hospital down in Columbus. And I was running a bar here, the south side, it used to be the village inn. And I got my report back from my doctor, and I was there two days, I think. And, and Dr. Atkins looked at me and he said, you know, Gary, if I was you, he said, I take alcohol out of your vocabulary. I act like it, act like it don't, don't ever exist. And automatically, I, I got a big <coughs> resentment toward my doctor. <laughs> and I remember somebody was drinking escapades, you know. And, uh, and that's the way I looked at it, you know. And I had a good business. I, everything I did usually worked out pretty good until I started drinking, you know what I'm saying? Everybody back then was getting back from Vietnam and they wasn't married and that didn't have houses and just had a pretty good business, but it seemed like the more I dr made, the more I drank. It seemed like back then you know, people would follow me around town because they knew where I went, I bought drinks, you know? <laughs> you know, uh, was in the Marine Corps for two year enlistment and after being in the Marine Corps for 15 months, I got promoted to sergeant. And before I could pin my stripes on, I was busted because of the disrespect of a, of a conduct of me becoming a Marine and drunkenness on duty and, you know, and everything I touched, everything I touched uh, and I drank, I got, I got, I lost it, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, I'm going to tell you, tell you that I wanted to be sober 51 years. Ain't no way. <laughs> I came to Alcoholics Anonymous because I had been introduced to Abe by Ron up in Fort Wayne, Indiana back in 1971. And I heard a young man going, giving his lead, and he was, uh, I think, about 19 years of age. And was at the St. Mary's uh, Saturday night Alcoholics Anonymous being there in Fort Wayne. And this guy talked about going through the DTs withdrawals and well, I never done that yet well I left Ron and I was running this bar in the cold water and I've been picked up by a liquor boy to serve miners and so I did the only thing a, a drunk knows how to do and he drank you know and I drank for 15 months and I thank God for those 15 months you know and I went through those DTs and withdrawals with the, that young man talked about climbing the walls, chasing evergreen in my underwear, hiding under my mom and dad's bed, hiding in a closet. You know, it seemed to be three to four days, you know, but I was totally terrified. And, uh, but one thing I remember most of all about those 15 months of drinking, I'd I remembered I drank like an alcoholic drank, you know. And so my parents uh, tried to get a hold of Ron, but he's working with a telephone company. And uh, so they contacted the county coroner in uh, Mercer County, which was Dr. Fox at that time. And Dr. Fox made an appointment with me at the Harding Hospital in Harding, in uh, Worthington, Ohio. And uh, I met a man of that day. I, I think it's been by either fourth or fifth psychiatrist in five years. And uh, he looked at me and he said, "You know, he said, you know, Gary, he said, you're gonna do things my way." And he said, "If you don't want to, 
He said, you can crawl under that rock where you came from. He said, you can die. The point, I had no place else to go. And I thank God for that. Because you know what? If I had a place to go, I probably went there. So God was working in my life at that time. Because that's how colleagues, we look for the easier, softer way. If you're here today, there's no easier, softer way than where you're, than where you're right at. <coughs> you know, and so I spent the first month I was there, I, I gained 40 pounds. I was a guy that, when I drank, I did not eat. Uh, weighed 125 pounds. I was mal malnutrition. Uh, I was dying from alcoholism. I lost all communication with my family, with my, with my friends, and with my God. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't because God was wasn't there. God's always been there, but I drank God out of my life. You know, and so uh, I spent four months in that hospital. And when I got moved over to the open door cottage. Uh, I ran into a lady, her name was Kitty Lippman. She was 72 and I was 26. <coughs> she wasn't an alcoholic, she was there because of nervous nervous conditions. We would sit hours in the end and talk and talk and talk, you know. And one day she looked at me and she said, you know, Gary, she, he said, she said, I think you're too good of a person to die an alcoholic death. And at that moment, I saw some light at the end of my tunnel. You know, I was introduced to Alcoholics Anonymous in January of uh, 73. I consider January 11th my uh, sobriety date. It could have been the 10th, it could have been the 15th, I don't know. But I choose January 11th. You know, what I thought was the end of my life was just the beginning. You know, and I turned seven, uh, up to be 78 in uh, May if I live that long. But I, I can tell you the most honest thing, honest thing I can tell you right here today, that if I, if I want to quit drinking, I never lived to be 78 years old or 77. There ain't no way, because you know what? I didn't want to. You know, I was destined to drink myself to death. Always had that attitude, always being a 9, 18 years of age, no responsibility, you know, and so I thought that's the way it was, you know. And uh, but one thing about Alcoholics Anonymous, it will screw your, it will screw your drinking up. Mm -hmm. If you know anything about alcoholism, if you're an alcoholic, it gets worse. It never gets any better. You know, they told me to stay here for the, wait until the miracles. Ron told me to stick around for the benefits. You know, he didn't tell me when they would come, but they came. And they'll come on God's time, not my time. You know, just, uh, you know. First step, I had no problems admitting I was an alcoholic. A hard time accepting the fact my life was unmanageable. You know, because I was I wasn't married, didn't have any kids floating around. I just did what I wanted to. But I found out that I hurt a lot of people. I hurt my parents, hurt my siblings, hurt my friends. I hurt anybody who came in touch with me. My employer. You know. I remember, I remember they told me to choose a God of my understanding, or choose a God, higher power of your own conception. And I'd been brought up with God all my life. I had a few aunts that were in the convent, the Catholic nuns in the convent. I was taught by priests and nuns here. You know, but when they told me to choose the higher power of my own conception, I just tell you, it's my higher power. It's not yours. It's not his. It's mine. And when I 
when I heard that, there was like a weight taken off my back. And I, I, I could feel that like that was yesterday. You know, it tells you right in the, in the readings that you, you'll remember stuff that hit you. You can't tell what day it is, but what time, but, but remember when it hit you. And I remember when that hit me. You know, the second step is we came to believe that something greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Like I said, when my abnormal became normal in my life, well, I thought everybody lived that way. Everybody got in trouble with drinking. Everybody didn't show up for work. Everybody loses a car. People end up in jails. You know, I thought I was just a natural way of living. But it, is, it isn't. It's not the natural way of living. You know, my mom died when she was 98 years of age, and she never spent a day in jail. Look what look like look at she's missed. <laughs> you know, but me going through that, I just thought it was a natural thing of drinking. I thought black, I was a blackout drinker. The first time I drank at 17 years of age, I could have came in Alcoholics Anonymous. I blacked out. Blacked out. Wrecked cars. Ended up getting a fight out at Eldora Speedway. You know, getting thrown out of there. They sh locked the whole damn place up, you know what I'm saying? That's, when I, that's before I went in the Marine Corps. <laughs> you know, so... Uh, I had a problem from the get start, you know what I'm saying? Every time I drank, I had problems. You know, and when, in this big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, really read this and it really hits me. You know, I think it's on page 21 of the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. Here's the fellow who has been puzzling you, especially in his lack of control. He does observe incredible, tragic things while he's drinking. He's the real Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He is seldomly, mildly intoxicated. He is always more or less insanely drunk. That was me. That was me. And, uh, I can relate to that. That's where I was. So when I said I had black, I had all blackouts. I always tell people if I could remember everything I did when I drank, I probably wouldn't be here. You know, that, but that's what God did for me. God, get, God makes you remember the stuff that's going to keep us here. You know. And so uh, I remember that they, they had a Thursday meeting at the St. Mark's group in Worthington, Ohio. And last Thursday of the month, they would have a, a lead. And back then, when he gave leads, you had a sh suit and tie on. Yeah. You had everything. That's the way. That's the way you give leads. If you didn't have a suit and tie on, you wouldn't give leads. But I remember that one night we had a guy give a lead. He was, I don't know, he's probably 70 years old. He was uh, at a green sports coat on, he had a green tie and a white shirt. Every hair on his head was in place. And he talked he talked like he I wanted to feel the same way on the inside that he looked on the outside. That's what I wanted. I wanted to feel the same way that he looked, you know, and you know, it's, a, it's easy once we admit we're al alcohol, alcoholic and we're, I had no trouble except that fact, but a lot of these other things are changing things in my life. I think one of my worst defects of character is self-will. Anything that I enjoy, anything I take pleasure out, I'll abuse to the limit of, of almost a sin. You know. And I did that for a lot of years and, and not drinking. Not drinking is just the tip of the iceberg. And I think where I really changed was that third step. 
where I made a decision, decision to turn the will, my will and my life over the care of a God of my understanding. And I looked for God's will. What is God's will? I looked for that in the Catholic Church. I looked for that in a bottle. Many years in recovery, I found out that God wills anything that is good. It's really simple, ain't it? But for me being an alcoholic, I complicated that. Like my one sponsor, Jerry, said, we will complicate a grape. <laughs> you know, and I did. Between the ninth and tenth step, that they talk about emotional sobriety. That's what I was looking for in that bottom of that bottle, was that emotional sobriety. Where everything's around is falling apart, but deep down I know everything's okay. You know, I, I stayed in the program long enough. I didn't drink. I went to meetings. I tried to help people. I just did the best I could. Made a lot of mistakes. That's just puppet. That's just part of life. I'm a human being. And so, you know, just stay in here. Going to meet, meeting makers make it. I had to be here to hear the message. You know. I had to be around good people in recovery. The old timers. You know. I got introduced to the Bible and I had 22 years of sobriety. And uh, I think any sooner I, I might not took it the way I did. So God shows up in her life at the right time. <coughs> you know. And Aubrey, the thing with Aubrey, when he was, a, when, he was a, when he came to Alcoholics Anonymous, he was an atheist. For eight years, he was an atheist. And people that know him, Kevin, Ron, I don't know if Dwayne knew him, Bob, do you know Aubrey? He's one of those most spiritual men in my life. One of the most spiritual men I've ever met in my life. Because he opened, he opened his home's doors and left us people in there. Yeah. I've been around a lot of religious people, but I'm going to tell you the honest truth. I've been around very few spiritual people. You know. And so, see, the door was opening that. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's just... Uh, just don't give. You just don't give up. You know, it tells us in the Bible. I know what I got to do, but I just don't want to do it. <laughs> That's me as an alcoholic. You know, don't tell me to do something. I won't do it. <laughs> Ask me to do something. I'll think about it. That's my way of thinking. That's the way of my thinking even today. You know, some of the things that happened in my life. You know. I had a health problem when I had 14 years of sobriety. I thought I had cancer. And so I remember that day. It was on December 4th, 1986. And I asked God, He said, if you get me through this, God, I said, I'll quit smoking. You know, that was the same day, 14 years later, that I went in the hospital for alcoholism. You know, I haven't had a cigarette since then. Since 1986. You know. An amazing thing is that I was going through this dry period in my drinking life, or my, my not drinking, and I knew I wasn't growing spiritual. Because Alcoholics Anonymous is a spiritual program. It's not a religious program. It's nothing like that. It is a spiritual program. Back in 99, I had open heart surgery. They found a tumor in my heart. You know, and uh, I had open heart surgery, and my friend Jimmy went down there with me. And one thing I remembered about going through that period of time, how I had grown in my spiritual life. I was no longer afraid to die. If you're afraid to die, there's something not right in your spiritual life. 
I, when I was drinking, I, I, I surely want want to wake up. Don't wake up, you know. But I was so damn afraid that I wouldn't. Today, if I go today, I'm ready spiritually, mentally, physically, everything. I'm okay to go if I'm to go tonight. A few years ago, I couldn't say that. You know. You know, hey, it's a good program. It, it saved my life. If you're not an alcoholic, you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. If you're an alcoholic, you know exactly what I'm talking about. One thing I tell people, the greatest thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I'm glad to be alive. I remember when I used to drink. It was just another terrible day. You know, God puts people in our life. I lost my dad. And then my dad and I never got along. And it wasn't my dad's fault. It was my fault. It was. I found out after he had been dead 10, 15 years, what my problem with my dad was. He could not live up to my expectations. You know, and the sad thing is, I love my dad more today than he did when he was alive. I look at all the stuff he tried to help me. And I slam it in his face. And I just totally resent that guy. And today I tell you, there's no reason why I should resent him. You know, uh, but when he died, was I spent the last eight, nine months of of his life together and I learned to love my dad like a son should love his dad you know, I'm, glad to, I'm glad to say that I really am that's probably the only regret probably one of the regrets I have not regret brought in kids into this world but one regret the way I treated my dad I really regret that but he was too good a man to be treated that way the only thing he did to me was to love me. And the love of drunk was a losing battle. You know, but I learned that in AA. I stuck around long enough for the benefits. You know. You know, last year I spent, spent uh, my 50th year down here. And I'll tell you the truth, Ron was down there. Kevin, you know, I don't hardly remember that. I don't remember that. And most of the time I can give leads and I can remember what I said. You know what I'm saying? I remember where, you know, but back then I remember, I don't remember that early. You know, so... You know, so another year goes by. Another year older. You know, I'm grateful for today. I'm grateful for what God has given me. You know, it talked about that in the, in the, in the 24 hour book about getting the stuff we don't deserve. You know. I look back at my my life and sobriety, and I was telling somebody today, you know, I've been sober 51 years. I only drank nine years. I drank alcoholically for nine years. And was really sad about my drink. It had a skid row mentality. I really did. I had a skid row mentality. I was one of those guys who just loved to jump a freight train and just let it go wherever it went. That was my way of thinking. And then I heard a guy say one time at a meeting, the wind blows through a $300 suit like it blows through a t-shirt. And that skid row mentality, I brought it in my mom and dad's house. They lived, they lived that shit. Because they loved me. That's why. They loved me. Until at a point, 
this is it. When they took me out of that hospital in, in, in uh, Worthington, Ohio, my dad looked at me, and he looked at me point blank. He said, you either get help here, or said, next time it'll be the Toledo State Hospital. And I knew, by looking in his eyes, I knew he, he meant what he said. And back in the 70s, the Toledo State Hospital wasn't too good of a place to go. You know, but Lay stepped in, God stepped in, and, you know, God did for me what I could not do for myself. And uh, so I don't know if you're, if you're happy being sober or not. If you're not happy, you best, best start making some changes. You best make some changes in your life. Somebody said you, st you start doing the things you aren't doing and stop doing the things you are doing. You know. I always say happiness is a joyful freedom. You know, happy, joyous, and free. I'm content, you know. I think that's one word we don't talk about much in AA is being content. Never satisfied with what I got. Always want more. You know. I'm satisfied. And I believe if, if I believed, if I got everything I wanted when I first got silver, I probably wouldn't be here today. And I thought when I got here, I thought I'm a, you know, that house with the white picket fence, the girl, the girlfriend, the college education, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I believe if I got all that, I probably wouldn't be here. Now tells us in a 24-hour book. That when I die, I will take nothing in my cold, dead hands. The only thing I will take is the things I've given away. You know, God doesn't care how big my bank account is, how much money I got in the bank, or the car I drive, or the job I have, or the. It tells us we should seek the kingdom of God. You know, because of that, I'm pretty reasonably happy today. I've got a little dog called Banjo. You know, they always say, what, is, what does dog spelt backwards spells God? You remember? I remember one time I was in a relationship with a woman, and uh, she left me for a guy for, uh, that was in and out of the Alcoholics Anonymous for 20 years. They spoke in pot. Man, when that happened to me, I just hit the skids, boys. You know, that, that rejection that we feel when we, I felt when I was drinking. You know, and I think one of the worst feelings I've had since I've been sober is I just didn't care. Have you ever had that feeling you just don't care? And I'll tell you how God works in our life. I mean, there's a guy I sponsor, and I 12-stepped his wife, and, and he called my sponsor, Vic, in, uh, in Troy, and Vic came down to talk to me. And we did, did an inventory in relationships. You see here, that girl wasn't in my life. I 12-stepped her, and she was sober for five years, and she went back out. She's never made it back since. But just because I 12-stepped her, or with God's help, I 12-stepped her. She called my sponsor up. This program works really weird. You know, I can't sober nobody up. You don't want to be sober. There's nothing you do. But every time I do a 12-step call, I, I do a first step. I gotta look at how powerless I am over your alcoholism, just like like my parents was powerless over my alcoholism. You know, they thought they could stop me from drinking, but it sells right there the three pertinent idea that I am alcoholic, that no human power can relieve our alcoholism. 
see that God could and would if you were sought. So that's where your answer is. God is the answer to all my problems. Big or little. If I asked him. You know. I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. I don't know if I said anything to help. Does it help me out? You know what I'm saying? I'll stay sober another day. And the, only thing that, the only thing that that token gives me is one, just one more day. That's it. That's all it gives you. Like Ron, he'll be celebrating 54 years on the 17th, and I'll go down there and give him his token. We'll go out and eat dinner. You know, that's what I'm supposed to do. That's what I'm supposed to do. That is God's will. Be a maximum service to God and to our fellow human beings. Pretty simple, ain't it? But boy, me as an alcoholic, I can screw that up so bad. You know, I want to thank Ron for coming down from Auburn. I want to thank all you guys for being here. Because this is a we program. It's not a me program. I got drunk. We get sober. When I first got sober, back in 73, Coldwater had nine bars and about 3,000 people. I told a friend of mine, Larry, I said, Larry, I said, I can't stay sober in cold water. And Larry's not an alcoholic, but he looked at me and he said, you know, Gary, he said, if you can't stay sober in cold water, he said, you can't stay sober anywhere. Because any place I move, the problem waits on me. Because I'm the problem. You know. Glad to see my buddy Richard back there. Hope he feels better. He had a bad leg for a while. You know, so I'm glad to see him. Glad to see my buddy Billy there. He made it. You know. So I don't know. I need everybody. See? I need everybody. That's what it's about. It's about us. It's about we. You know, you, sh you showed me a different way to live. And if I would have found the Alcoholics Anonymous, I'd never found this way to live. And I totally believe, I tell people, I could have stayed in my church and I'd, die, I'd have died drunk. And that's nothing bad about my church, it's just my attitude. See, my attitude. Everything I heard, like my friend Jimmy tells, tells me, my ears was on backwards. <laughs> you know, that's the way it was. My ears was on backwards. I just heard what I wanted to hear. I had the selected hearing, you know what I'm saying? That's my alcoholic thinking. Not because of anything bad up there, it's just that's the way I heard it. So I want to thank everybody for being here. I think I'll thank God for another day of sobriety. And don't ever forget my last drunk. So if I forget my last drunk, I haven't had it yet. That's all. Thanks, Gary. What a powerful lead. Wow. Um, I could relate to a lot of things, and you know, a lot of things you said is why I keep coming back, because I, I constantly need those reminders. Um, and I, I liked how you talked about, when, when you went through your, diff, your your 51 years of sobriety, how it wasn't always perfect. You know, everything you've done, you said that more than once, wasn't perfect, but you did everything to the best of your ability. Um, Another thing that amazes me about you is we can take George over here, and George can be the worst guy in the world, but you will find something good about George, and that's all you'll talk about. Always. You're always that way. You know, and that just, you're always upbeat, and you're positive most of the time. <laughs> um, like you said, we're not perfect. I, mean, I just thank you for being my friend. We have a lot of fun going together, different meetings and stuff. And when you managed that bar over there in Coldwater, who was the best customer in there? Was. You were. <laughs> it's customary. We'll open it up. Open up the floor. Anybody that would like to comment? My name's Ron. I'm an alcoholic. Ron. You know, I uh, I love uh, 
some of the threads. Gary's lead is full of threads. You should listen very carefully. He, he's, uh, and, and you know him. He's a wee person. It's never, it's never in all my years with Gary, it's never been about Gary. Mm -hmm. It's about we. And, and he also, he also uh, uh, has a true connection to a higher power. And um, I believe that that too is, is, is very, is very critical uh, to hanging out in Alcoholics Anonymous. If you, if you, if you can grasp that concept and for yourself and to own it, you are truly in a better place than not than not having. And uh, that's all I've got. And thanks, Derek, for being my friend. Thanks, Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron. I'm Tom Alcoholic. Tom. Hey, um, um, I've heard you quite a few times. Just want to say thank you for being there every time I needed you. All the way back when. Way before I was in the end. Thanks, Tom. I'm Andrew, your cousin, you the home. Andrew. I want to thank you, Gary. You were there when I first came around. I've seen you a lot. I heard people talking about 10, 15 years, and I thought that was possible. Well, I learned it's. And, uh, you just got to keep working one day at a time. I want to just thank you for sharing with us. Thanks, Andrew. Really good, I'm uh, drug addict. Uh, I just want to say thank you, Gary. Uh, you're a big inspiration in my life, and I really appreciate it. I welcome you to the Calcrawls Anonymous uh, last year when I wasn't sober. And I really, really appreciate you for that. And I love you genuinely. So thank you so much, Gary, for being in my life and part of my life. Thanks, Thanks Billy. Billy. I I'm love Joe. all you guys, too. I'm Joe Alphonse. Hi, Joe. I'm Gary, I want to thank you. You was here when I came. And we've traveled far and wide over the years. And we had a lot of fun. And it's just like Ron said, it's you're always a wee program. I remember early on my sponsor, Bill, he told me to get the word I out of my vocabulary. He said, this is a wee program. And, uh, you guys taught me a lot. Love you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. I'm Dwayne. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Dwayne. Dwayne. Yeah, the first time I tried his program, Gary was there, and he was there when I came back the second time. And, uh, you know, that I stuff and this stuff stuff, you know, you just got to get that shit out of there, and, you know, because I've heard it this time around, too, it's not how much you drink, how often you drink, it's what happens to you when you drink, and that hit me right square in the eyes this time in the program, and that's where the more meetings you make, the big thing that you need to hear, and everybody in these rooms that will love you and help you until you can help yourself, if you don't believe that, just stick around, because it will get better. And life is a lot better here than out drinking and drugging. And with that, I want to thank you, Lift Gary, for your lead. Thanks for being my friend. Thanks, Thanks Dwayne. Steve, I'm the Hall Steve. Hi, Steve. Well, Gary, I, I didn't have any idea you were leaving tonight, so I got lucky. Um, I was six years old when you got sober. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it took me 38 years uh, to realize that... Uh, that I was powerless over alcohol and my life was unmanageable. Once I realized that and let God into my life, things changed drastically. And I remember walking into one of my first meetings, the Wednesday night meeting, and you were there. And somehow I just knew that's the guy I needed to talk to. I don't know if it was something you said in the meeting or directly to me or what, what, what that uh, exactly was. But, um, you know, there's there's it's been quite a journey. And... Um, since my sobriety started, and I do remember that last drunk very clearly, even though I was drunk. Um, and uh, what I struggle with sometimes is control, and, and I have to remind myself constantly, let go and let God, and I work on my attitude every day, and you help me with that, and I appreciate it. I love you like a brother. Thank you for your leading. Thanks, Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. I'm Bob Alcohol. Hey, Bob. 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 A long time to go to 
stick with the winners. And it's pretty simple. You know, you win, you win, you know, stay away from the people that bullshit you. You, you, didn't, you didn't throw me anything. anything. You always told me the truth. And, uh, I knew your sponsor was uh, Vic and Aubrey. Uh, I heard from Vic that Aubrey got sober in Greenland. You know, you think about it, there ain't no AA in Greenland. Especially on a radar station, this will be. But he he got sober there. Yeah, I uh, I, I enjoy knowing the, the old timers as I go along. And there's not too many of us left. <coughs> Thanks to you, you are older than me. Not yes. much, but you are. Older. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Kevin, I'm now calling Kevin. Kevin. Thanks, Gary. I've heard you many times over the years. And, uh, you know, when I uh, I first I, I met Gary in the 80s, uh, right in this basement in an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. And uh, I haven't been sober since I met him the first time. But, uh, you know, when I came back 15, 20 years later, he was still here. And, uh, you yeah, know, and uh, he's helped me a long way. And uh, I, I'll always be grateful for that, uh, you know. And uh, I, you know, when I got here, like Bob mentioned, you know, those old timers, and uh, you know, I learned a lot. From that. I learned what this was all about and how to stay sober. And uh, you know, by the grace of God, here I sit today, you know, sober. And. Uh, you know, I, I'm very grateful for that, and uh, thanks for being my friend. And uh, just keep coming back. I'll pass. Thanks, thanks Kevin. Kevin. I'm Debbie. 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 Thanks for being alive. Gary. Thanks for being our life. And I can relate a lot to what you said. So much <coughs> being you know, a blackout drinker, I was too. You know, blackout pass, I wouldn't come first. Mm -hmm. But I can just uh, relate a lot. Like, you know, God's got perfect timing. He just does. He's, he's just, he shows up right when we're ready. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that happens, but I know it's happening. <coughs> yeah. I'd just like to thank you for your belief. I'm glad I was here with you. And just uh, congratulations on your 51 years. For sure. Love you. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad. I'm Mitch. I'm an alcoholic. Hey, Mitch. Hey, Mitch. Yeah, you know, what Joe said about some of the good times you guys had. I mean, when I think about, I, I just think about it today. But I have some really good times at ten day meaningful jails where we got we pick up Richard and we start busting Richard's chops. And, you know, <laughs> it's really good. It's really good sober time. I do have a good time uh, getting to these meetings with you, and you helped me out because I could ask you uh, for a ride to a meeting a month, at, you know, a month in advance. Say, can you, can you help me out? I don't got to ask you if you're going to remember that date and you're going to help me out. Uh, you're a man of your word. Uh, yeah, just there's so much things I'd like to say, Gary, but I ain't going to hold everybody up. But thank you so much, man. Thanks, Mitch. Thank you. Steve Alcohol. Steve. Steve.
friend of mine asked me one time what would be the, they asked me, well, what's the definition of alcoholism? And I had to do some research on that, but I didn't, I didn't go to the dictionary. I went to various people and asked them. And my definition of, the, of alcoholism is a disease that affects you spiritually, mentally, physically, and morally, because it does. It does. And I remember when I came back to Mercer County back here about over about a year. And during that time I've seen people come in, go out. I'm still here. A few other people in this room are still here when I first met them. And you know, you talk about the old timers. I realize now that since I've been here in this program for a while, all the young kids, all these young people Thanks, Steve. Anyone else? Okay, if we all like to stand, join the circle and hold hands if you want to. Thank you.